Hello, statistics students. Today, I am introducing you to the JASP program. Two questions. One, what is JASP? And B, why should you use it? Those are the two questions that I am going to answer first. JASP is computer software that you can use to do statistics, such as you may have already done with programs like R with RStudio, Stata, SAS, Minitab, or SPSS. If you are a student taking an introductory statistics course, or an instructor looking for an open source alternative to SPSS, or a business person who wants to do statistical analysis without buying expensive software, or an academic researcher wanting to publish in a scientific journal. Learning to use JASP may be well worth the small amount of time and uh, zero amount of money that it takes to get started. Why should you use JASP? Let me give you four reasons, starting with this. JASP is free. JASP is open source, so it is free to download and to use. JASP was designed at the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And JASP is supported by the JASP team. So JASP is and will always be free. Next, JASP is friendly. The three programs that I use the most are SPSS, R with RStudio, and JASP. And here's why. I love the simplicity of those drop-down menus in IBM SPSS statistics. SPSS is easy to use, so it's easy for me to teach, and it's easy for you to learn. But SPSS is expensive and it requires a yearly subscription. You spend all that time in college learning how to use SPSS, and you will probably never have a copy of SPSS to use after you graduate. Now R, with RStudio, is powerful, respected, and free. But R has a steep learning curve. Students end up spending time that they could use learning statistics, instead learning to become amateur computer programmers. R is difficult to learn, meaning that it is difficult to teach. Frustration is high with R. JASP, however, is extremely user-friendly. JASP gives you the power of R with the simplicity of SPSS. Or said another way, JASP is cheaper than SPSS and easier to use than R. And another thing that makes JASP so user-friendly is its dynamic updating. As you select options, JASP immediately shows you the outcome in the results panel, allowing you to forget about the software and instead focus on the statistics. JASP is easy to teach, easy to learn, and hard to mess up. So frustration is low for students and professors alike. Third, JASP is flexible. JASP is statistically inclusive. It does both traditional or frequentist statistics and Bayesian analyses. It can open file formats from Excel after converting to a CSV or SPSS files or directly from the Open Science Framework. JASP's flexibility is cross-platform. It works with Mac OS X, with Microsoft Windows, and with Linux. And finally, letter D, JASP is functional. JASP is designed to be simple and intuitive. But of course, that only matters if you can trust the results. And with JASP, you can. Because JASP uses the powerful R statistical architecture as its engine, 
JASP is powerful enough to do all of the analyses that you would need for an introductory statistics course. Descriptive statistics and frequencies. Three kinds of t-tests. One way and repeated measures ANOVA and their Bayesian alternatives. Correlation and regression and non-parametric analyses. JASP can do advanced statistics like factor analysis, or you can add free modules to do structural equation modeling or social network analysis. Plus, JASP calculates effect sizes like Cohen's D for a t-test, something that SPSS still does not do. JASP creates APA formatted figures and tables that you can copy directly into your paper or dissertation. You can copy tables in LaTeX format and then use your favorite LaTeX editor to compile it into a PDF. Now I'm going to do three things with this set of videos. Number one, for statistics students, I will introduce you to the JASP software and show you how to do all of the tests that you would typically need for an introductory statistics course. Number two, for statistics instructors, you are free to link to these training videos for your classroom or online course. But if you do, please drop me a line or leave a comment because I love to hear how my videos are being used in places all over the world. And, letter C, for anyone switching from SPSS to JASP, I will make plenty of comparisons between SPSS and the JASP software. And if I could ask for one more thing in return, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you find that the videos are helpful. I read all of the comments and respond to many of them. At the end of each video, you will find a link to move on to the next one in the series. As we begin, I want to assure you that this is an introduction to JASP for absolute beginners. I assume that you have utterly no knowledge of JASP. You have never used the program before, and this is your first time exploring it. I do assume, however, that you are familiar with your computer either a Mac, a PC, or a Linux system. I will be using Mac for the most part. And of course, I assume that you have installed JASP on your computer. Visit the JASP website, choose your version, and download it entirely for free. No strings attached. You may even want to check out the blogs for help with how to use it. And there are plenty of resources already on YouTube. Now, many people ask what the JASP name stands for. Now, for the longest time, it was politely understood to be an acronym that did not stand for anything. And the joke was that it certainly did not stand for just another statistics program. So please, stop spreading that rumor. But now, the JASP name has an official meaning. Jeffrey's Amazing Statistics Program. It is named for Sir Harold Jeffries, the great Bayesian statistician. That's our story, and we're sticking to it. So let's get started. Meet me in the next video, and we will get acquainted with the JASP workspace.